welcome to another edition of Christ and Culture of Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short and today I'm going to be examining and looking at a movie that recently came out which I really think is a good movie. I actually do recommend it to people to see. I think it fulfills the criteria criterion of entertainment. It's a great example of good entertainment. But I would recommend it with qualifications. I have to qualify my recommendations. Now what movie am I talking about? I'm talking about the movie La La Land. That will probably win many, many awards at the award ceremonies this year, the Grammy the Oscar and all kinds of other things. I believe it will win a lot because it's a good movie. Like I said, with qualifications. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, I would I would uh, recommend you see it. But I would also recommend that you take note of some of the things that are contained in the movie and write it up as simply a product of our secular humanistic age. Now what are the, the parts that I would take exception with the movie? What are the parts that I would not recommend as far as the entire movie? Well obviously the first and foremost part of the movie that I would not recommend is that one of the main characters, there are two main characters in this movie, a man and a woman, a young man and a young woman, and they fall in love. I don't want to try to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but so I'm not going to go into details about what happens, but along the way they fall in love, and then the next scene we see them living together, or actually not living together, but sleeping together in, their, in the same bed. Now, I, I realize that in our culture, this is not something that is seen as any big deal. In fact, since the 60s, this is a fairly common occurrence. It's typical. I think the statistics show right now that most couples, before they even bother getting married, live together. It's a very common occurrence in our secular uh, neo-pagan society. But that doesn't mean it's right. And I've preached on this, I've talked about this before. I have written articles. One of my articles that I wrote was when, uh, I think it was Prince William and Kate Middleton, and they were engaged it came out in the press and the newspapers that they were in fact living together. So when they went to get married they were already living together. Surprise. A totally typical modern couple. And I criticized that in the newspaper article I wrote. Got a huge response. I wrote an article that said they should not be living together. It's a bad role model, bad example. Runs contrary to the Christian teaching, biblical teaching, you name it. There's no question about that. Uh, Christianity has always taught, based on the words of Christ and the apostles, that marriage is the only area for sexual activity. Sexual activity before marriage is sin. It's called fornication. This is all basic Christian moral, moral teaching. Uh, sex outside of marriage is called adultery. That's a sin. It's wrong. It shouldn't be done. And so I criticized William and Kate for their living together, sex before marriage, fornicating as a bad role model. And I still criticize them for doing so. But that is past. That's over. They're married. God bless them. Wish them well. Now we have a movie that is very popular, La La Land. In fact, 
if you look at some of the reviews, uh, you can tell that there are people that absolutely just love this movie. They've gone back to see it uh, three, four, five times or more because it gives them a good feeling. It's a, it's a, it's a well done movie. The interaction with the two leading characters is great. Um, everything is believable. The music is seamless. The dancing, it's a musical. So, um, and it was done well. And it was well thought out. And I would give it uh, a lot of stars, four stars. But I wouldn't give it five stars because of what will happen when young people see the leading characters of the movie committing fornication, they will go, I love that movie. I love their relationship. I'm going to do what they do. I'm going to follow in their footsteps. I'm going to copy them. And let's be honest, without Christian revelation, without any commitment to Christianity, most people, young people, get their values from television and the theater and movies and the internet and from their peers so this movie is going to be teaching teenagers to fornicate and feel good about it why because well Mia and Sebastian in La La Land lived together or they slept together and they weren't married and it was a fun movie and everything worked great and there were no negative consequences in their relationship so I'm gonna do that because I think that looks pretty cool to do that because I want to be like Mia and Sebastian in the Land movie. Well that's the danger of this movie because it's so well written and so good that it will lead people into the activities that they see on the screen. I know for one it's going to lead people to many people, how, how, how many I don't know, how would anybody know, but it's going to probably recruit thousands of young people to pack up and go to Hollywood to pursue their dreams because that's what the characters in this movie did and it worked out. So you're going to get a lot of people who are going to pursue stardom in Hollywood just like Mia and Sebastian. So you're going to get that role model, that leadership take place. And you're going to also see people in their minds saying, well, you know, Mia and Sebastian slept together before they were married, and it was a really beautiful relationship. And so that's just another reason why I should do that in my life. And this is going to be something that leads many people into sin. Not that they needed any more encouragement than they already have, but it's going to be something that reinforces the immorality of our time because you have the leading characters in this movie carrying on like this. And that's the problem. That's the problem. I would give this movie a five stars. I would give this movie higher marks, but because it actually promotes open immorality, casual immorality, that's the thing. I mean, these people had not known each other very long. These people just met, and all of a sudden, they're sleeping together. They're doing what is strictly forbidden in Christianity. And let's be honest, most people identify with Christianity still. Most young people still have a connection to the Christian faith. If you were to ask most young people today, what is your religion? They would say Christianity. But what does that mean? If you basically live and think like the world, what does it mean to be a Christian if you basically uh, do whatever the world does and you don't follow the teachings of Christianity? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. You are just basically using the name Christian, but there's no substance behind it. And unfortunately, that that is the state of most young people today. And when they see things like this, they're going to be influenced. And whatever 
teachings and resolve they had before as far as moral commitments, these kind of movies are going to soften that even minimal moral commitment to the teachings of the Bible. So that's one of the main reasons why I cannot give this movie five stars uh, or high marks uh, because of its unfortunate negative influence in that area. Another area that I'll point out, it's not as big as the first area, but it is a concern. Uh, you see a typical modern secular humanistic emphasis again on career over a potential marriage relationships. Uh, you have, for example, Mia in a really good relationship with Sebastian. You would think that this might be something that she would uh, put as a priority because, after all, uh, it's normally that when you have something going as well as they seemingly had something going, that would be somewhat of a priority in your life. You would want to say, hey, I'm not going to risk anything that could break this up. I would put this above career. I would put this above money. I would put this above any kind of um, material progress that I could make. Career, uh, honor. Um, I would put this above a lot of secular concerns because hey this is a this is something special we have something special here and who can doubt that they had something special um, you know I think most people looking upon what they were experiencing in their relationship most couples would say wow I wish I had that kind of experience uh, that these two people had and so what they had was special and yet they put their own career dreams ahead of that. Um, first of all, Sebastian signed up for this uh, tour and he put that, knowing that he might have to be gone on the road for a year or two, ahead of his relationship with Mia. Okay, that started things. And you wonder, why would he do that? Why would he put that ahead of their relationship? I mean, here they're already sleeping together. They're already acting like man and wife. They're already functioning in many respects as if they're married. And now he goes off and signs a contract to be gone for a year or two on the road without even talking to his de facto wife. And she's upset obviously she has every reason to be uh, they're in this special relationship and yet he's making decisions as if he's single still technically he is still single but emotionally spiritually yes spiritually it says in the bible when two people have sex they're one flesh so whether he had a piece of paper that said married he was married in the eyes of god and so, uh, he's married in the spiritual sense, in the eyes of God. And so, they're one flesh. He should have talked to her. She, he should have said, what does this mean? I'm being offered to go on the road, be a musician. That was his goal. That was his career dream. Not his ultimate dream. His ultimate dream was to have a club and do jazz. But he should have talked to his de facto wife, Mia, and said, how can we work this out? So that was a problem that he did and he created. And obviously that was something that tested her loyalty because if her de facto husband, her sleep with boyfriend was willing to do that, uh, then maybe she needed to adjust her thinking as far as how important they were one to another. And 
Then we see her take her career opportunity to go to France. Now, she was encouraged by him to go ahead and take this opportunity and go overseas and do some acting in France. But that was her choice and that was her decision at, rather than to stay and be by the side of her boyfriend who would not actually be on uh, in Los Angeles where they're living or be by her by the side of him because he'd be traveling so I guess she could have chosen to travel with him but that didn't fit into her career plan so again you have two people who are actually making their career choices priority rather than their relationship uh, with one another and that is a new twist that is a new thing uh, that's part of the uh, feminist ideology on the side of the woman's part that's part of the feminist ideology that you choose career and you don't act as if the ultimate goal is marriage you don't act as if the ultimate goal is to be married and have children and raise a family that's not now today the ultimate goal thanks to the feminist revolution of the 70s now the ultimate goal is to do whatever you want to do and be whatever you want to be and so that is reflected in this movie when both of the characters but especially Mia chooses to uh, spend her prime time and make her emphasis on her career rather than the relationship that she has with Sebastian and and that's a new take that's a new take uh, and that reflects the new thinking today that reflects the uh, a lot of feminism now a lot of people didn't catch that in the movie they it's so common today and it's so much a part of our culture our culture has absorbed so much feminist ideology both men and women that a lot of people look at that and say hey you know this I didn't even notice that well of course you didn't notice it because you are part of this culture that is so saturated with feminism but this is a component of feminism where you don't automatically choose marriage family children uh, even when you're in a great relationship you might walk away from that to pursue something else some career some job opportunity whatever this is totally different than before now some people say well that's okay that's okay things change times change that is true but we have to also consider that we need to label it and identify it and look at it and think about it and say look uh, you have a record number of people who are single today you have a record number of people who are depressed today they're on antidepressants you have more psychological problems today and more spiritual problems today than ever before um, you have uh, people who are lonely and have all kinds of emotional problems and are hurting why choices choices and I think if you look at the Christian teachings in the Bible you're going to find out that that it puts the priority emphasis on marriage and family and the relationship aspect it gives guidelines and principles for living and interacting in the male-female relationships uh, it says that if you're single you don't have sex before marriage if you want to have sex if you want to have intimacy if you want to have that closeness that only comes in the sexual act you have to get married but today see the two characters here Mia and Sebastian they were having sex but they weren't married and so they 
now conclude I don't have to have a marriage ring to have sex. I can have sex and be single too. And so that's a contradiction from the Christian teachings. Now, there are consequences for breaking the commands of God. There are consequences. And what we see today in society are the fruits of breaking God's commands. Why do we have more people divorced today than ever before? Why do we have over half of all marriages, relationships, marriage relationships, breaking up in divorce? Why? Because the marriage relationship is not made a priority in a person's life. I mean, especially in Hollywood. Oh. We don't even want to talk about Hollywood. Hollywood is a bad example. I'm talking about general culture. Over 50% of normal people who get married divorce. In Hollywood, I don't know, what is it, 80%, 90%? It's off the map, it's off the charts. We don't even want to talk about that. It's a mess. Those people pretty much will sell their soul to get ahead in Hollywood. Unfortunately, that's not even a secret. That's not even that's a that's not even a joke anymore because it's so true. Everybody knows it. But the general population when that kind of loose immorality happens and the disrespect for marriage and dis deprioritizing marriage happens in general society you see a widespread collapse, and that's what we see today. We see divorce, terrible, broken families. We have kids who have never seen their father. We have children being raised by single parent mothers. Nowadays, sometimes single parent fathers. That was another aspect in the movie. When Mia eventually comes back from Paris, lo and behold, she's married. It's kind of a spoiler, but it's not a big one. And who's staying home watching the kids? Her husband. Again, liberated women with feminist theology and ideology. There are consequences for that in society, though. In a movie, it can all work out. You can make the end of a movie work out great, but it doesn't have to reflect reality. That's the problem. When people start trying to live like that in the real world, there are real world consequences and society itself falls apart and we see that process taking place before our very eyes today. So I would say that this is a great movie for entertainment value, but I would also give a warning. Don't try to copy the main characters and don't try to duplicate this in your own life. Because if you try to, it's going to collapse, it's going to come to ruin. Because this stuff, when it is worked out in society in general, produces pain, produces suffering, produces ruin, produces collapse of morals. It produces so many problems that we don't have time to even cover them. From a Christian perspective, there are many things that were going wrong in this movie. But in Hollywood and on the screen, you can ignore all of the negative consequences and you can sing and dance your way to a happy conclusion. And that's what I'm seeing in this movie. So again, I would go see the movie. I would enjoy the movie if I were you. I would enjoy the music. And it is hard to not enjoy this music. I enjoy the music. I got the soundtrack. I got it playing on in the background. And another warning, it's hard to get that music out of your head. And it's, it's nice music to have in your head, so it's not so bad. But the themes are catchy. The singing is really uh, catchy, the tunes. And it's, it's a delightful movie. But I do give it uh, less than perfect because of the concerns that I just shared. So I hope that you uh, found this review helpful. 
you have to realize I'm coming from a Christian perspective. I'm not down on this movie. I'm just trying to say, look, these are things you need to consider. These are things going on underneath. You might have missed these things. But as a Christian, I'm here to point them out to show you that there are some powerful messages underneath the main message that have the potential of really messing some people up, especially young people, if they try to copy or follow or be what the leading characters are in this movie. There are things that are taking place in this movie, assumptions made about morality, about the purpose of life, about values. There are statements and attitudes about marriage that are being made here that you might not catch overtly, but they're there nonetheless. You need to be aware of them and you need to put them to the test of the biblical revelation we have. And when you look at it from that perspective, a lot of bad things that are being said in this movie. I'm not talking about language. I'm not talking about um, other things that might be there that someone might object to. I, I don't, I'm not going to get into any of that. I'm just going to say that the two most harmful ideas that I saw were the the bad attitude about marriage and uh, marriage relationship and the immorality that was casually brought in to this movie. But other than those, uh, and the also the feminist theology and ideology that was there from the beginning. But other than that, go see the movie, enjoy it, just beware. That, and this is usually what happens in our in our culture. You're going to get good and bad. You're going to get a mix. You're going to get stuff that is really, really creative and really clever and really entertaining and artistically great. And you're also going to get stuff that is morally bad and spiritually dangerous. And so I would just say, go see the movie, but be aware of what you're seeing and be aware of what's underneath in the subplot and the sub assumption. Be aware of those things. And I just thought I would report on that and we'll see you back here next week on another edition of Christian Answers. God bless.